Hi, I'm Chris Thompson for Investor Intel. And today I'm with Alan Davidoff, the founder, president, and CEO of Zortex Therapeutics. How are you today, Alan? I'm well, Chris. Thank you for uh, the invitation and opportunity to chat with you and your investors. So uh, uh, Zortex is a biotechnology company, and it, and it focuses on developing therapies uh, for kidney diseases. Why don't you give us a quick uh, overview uh, of the company and its products? Zortex Therapeutics, uh, from its inception, has been looking at uh, progressive kidney disease as an area where there are very few therapeutic options and, and a great opportunity to develop drugs. Um, our focus is really on, on defining what's happening in a number of kidney disease, like the orphan kidney disease, autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, and bringing two uh, that area to patients in that area, therapies that would reduce the oxidative stress and aberrant purine metabolism that play a role in the mechanism of injury that we see occurring. And, and with our second program in acute kidney injury associated with COVID infection, we also see that there's a role for aberrant purine metabolism and high uric acid that could be driving worse uh, outcomes for kidneys heart and potentially the susceptibility to serious sepsis infection. Now you've started with uh, using an existing drug in the marketplace and, and reformulating that drug. Can you just go over the, the, the drug itself and, and what's the advantages of starting at that point? So our focus with the autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease program is to take a drug that's been materially advanced through FDA filings and has received an FDA approvable letter in the past. Despite uh, that advanced stage, it's never been approved for marketing anywhere in the world. Uh, one can argue based on the evidence that it's the best tolerated of any of the xanthine oxidase inhibitor class of drugs, and so a great starting point for us. Uh, knowing that it's, it's potentially approvable, uh, knowing that the safety and efficient effectiveness is well-defined, and knowing that we can improve uh, on that drug by novel, innovative formulations and deliver it to patients across a broader dosing range often comes with an improved side effect profile. And so we see this as a, as a young company that's advancing to a late stage as the ideal scenario. And the market you're looking at, let's just focus on uh, the acute kidney injury or what people call, sometimes call AKI. Um, what size of market is this? Well, this is, this is a market today. If you look at the, the US numbers today, there were around 6,000 individuals who are hospitalized. The data from a partnership that we established with Mount Sinai Hospital Group in uh, New York City is showing that about half of all, all hospitalized individuals have a combination of acute kidney injury and very high uric acid levels that are concerning. Um, the impetus there is to test them early. That 3,000 patients a day uh, represents a large number, almost a million people a year that probably could be addressed with a therapy that rapidly lowers their uric acid and then maintains it low. Uh, over the course of their infection. And we see that as, as a new opportunity that's really emerged since uh, March and, and doesn't seem to be going away as, as COVID. Uh, you know, all indicators are that COVID is endemic to the world and, and is not uh, something that we can overcome at this point. And, and recently you raised, uh, you know, over $13 million US uh, and also uplisted uh, onto the NASDAQ stock exchange to get more uh, U.S.-based investors. Uh, what are you planning to do with those funds? Right. Well, the, the Nasdaq uplisting, of course, the advantages to listing on the on the major U.S. exchanges is that you open the doors to investors across the globe, not not just the U.S. or or Canada or or other jurisdictions. Those funds are important for the next steps that we're taking. We see uh, 2022 as a very exciting year. We are moving from the final step in characterizing these formulations for the two programs, the one in autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease and in uh, acute kidney injury due to COVID as uh, eminently advanceable through 
pharmacokinetic studies in the first part of 2022, and then advancing into late stage registration trials uh, in the summer and autumn of next year. When you're doing that, the trial, is that what they would typically call a phase three trial with the FDA? Right. So the discussions we've had with the FDA are that that our formulations, the drugs are um, safe and effective. We see them as requiring only a single registration trial, so a single phase three trial to advance them to marketing approval. In the case of polycystic kidney disease, that would be an orphan indication. So we're seeking orphan drug designation for that program. We see that clinical trial being about 32 months, 36 months, somewhere in that range, and then we're then being ready for approval. In the terms of the COVID trial, that's a much shorter trial. Uh, we believe that rapidly lowering uric acid when patients are hospitalized and then uh, suppressing the production of uric acid over the course of their infection will have a meaningful uh, effect on their outcome for acute kidney injury. The work from the Mount Sinai group is also showing that the heart seems to be a injured bystander organ and the susceptibility to sepsis we're just defining now, but that represents a very large unmet medical need um, in hospitals across the globe. Interesting. Now, we talked briefly about the AKI market and the other market you were going after, what you call the polycystic kidney disease market, and you mentioned orphan disease. And, and so can you give us a, a sort of an idea of what the size of that market is? Right. So the definition of orphan diseases in the U.S., in Japan, and in Europe is, is a rare disease. In the U.S., it's under 200,000 individuals uh, that are addressable. In the case of polycystic kidney disease, it's fairly large. It falls at the, the upper end of that scale, so 150,000 patients or so. In that space, there are very few therapeutic options. Physicians generally prescribe blood pressure drugs. And there is a single drug that was approved in 2018 called Tolvaptin or Genarc. It is, uh, it's poised at, in year three of approval to sell almost a billion dollars worth of drug, uh, despite the fact that it's addressing about 5% of the market. So there is a large remaining unmet medical need for 95% of that market. We see that as um, addressable with our drug and certainly addressable in terms of the mechanism of injury that we're defining right now and, and uh, have very high hopes for the um, successful conduct of the phase, phase three registration trial that we're planning to initiate in the fall this year. Now, in addition to working with Investor Intel doing videos, I'm also the head of research at eResearch, and we cover your company. We did a report recently uh, where we have our biotech farm analyst uh, did a buy recommendation update report and a $27 price target. Currently, you're trading uh, below $3, so we see quite an upside to this uh, based on you know, the, the trials taking place um, and some revenue being generated in a few years from now. Uh, as, uh, as investors uh, looking at the stock, what can they look forward to as far as news flows goes, say over the next uh, six months or even for all of 2022? Because, you know, as a biotech pharma company, you know, you have a, you're, you're, you're planning further out ahead than that. So what's, a, what's up in store for 2022 for you? Yeah, so our, our key um, activities and certainly the ones we see as um, value creating steps are uh, obtaining the orphan drug designation in polycystic kidney disease, uh, completing our basic work, our pharmacokinetic work for these new formulations prior to starting the phase three trials. Certainly the start of those phase three trials are, are important steps for the company. And, and um, you know, we also see because we're late stage, the potential for uh, many of the discussions we're having with uh, pharma to turn into co-development deals and, and certainly support us as we go through phase three and marketing and sales into the future. So um, a, lot of, a lot of exciting work being done this year, the funding that we did with the NASDAQ uplisting and the pipe that we concluded in February of 2021 uh, will support that work and allow us to advance and, and create further value. 
Well, well, thanks for your time, Alan. I think it was a great overview. Uh, I was speaking with Alan Davidoff, who is the founder, president, and CEO of Zortex Therapeutics. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate the chance to chat with you.